What's up, wizards? It's Dev. So, boom, take me like a magic, and today I got a new uh, YouTube video for you. Because that's my job. Good job. And today, well, actually today, Wizards just officially previewed a bunch of new Planeswalkers from that new Phyrexia set that's coming out soon. And I really want to talk about those. I'd really like to talk about those, as a matter of fact. But instead, what we got to do before we get into spoiler season is slam that door on Bro Standard. Thank God we don't have to say Bro Standard anymore. That's kind of nice. Anyway, we're going to do one more video about the Brothers War Standard. How do we like it or not? Was it a good standard? Who knows? I guess we'll talk about it today with the Bro standard report card that was very youtube wasn't it the bro standard report card we're gonna do that we're gonna talk a little bit about bro standard but of course first the philosophical existential discussion of what even makes a good standard well you see a good standard of course has um crap i didn't think that i'd be i forgot that i'd be holding a microphone when i did this let me put you here are you going to fall oh my god probably probably let's a good a good standard, you see, what a good a good standard has uh, layers, like an ogre. And today we're going to talk about some of them layers and see if bro standard has them or if it's actually very cold when it goes outside because it doesn't have enough... It doesn't have enough layers. Actually, there is one more thing just before we get to the body of the video. I'm pointing at my notebook. You don't know that, but my notebook's over here. There's no way you could know that. But anyway, what I'm, the little thing here is that I've sort of changed the way that I think about standard and thus like doing a video like this. We've never done like a standard report card before. It's a new idea. Hope you like it. But what I would normally do for this is I would go to like MTGO league results, challenges and stuff. I would find paper tournaments that were highly attended and stuff like that. I would go to MTG Melee, right? And find the data and crunch them numbers, have a big old data party. And I'm still doing that. There's Don't worry. I'm still, it's not all like anecdotal. This is what I think about arena, but there really are like facts and figures. I'm, I'm, I wouldn't do that to you, but I pulled all those facts and figures from etherhub.com this time around because I feel like nine tenths or so, I think a realistic number of the player base probably experiences standard on MTG Arena nowadays. So pretty much all of the data that I've pulled from are from specifically Magic the Gathering Arena aggregate sites. Sorry, but I'm pretty sure that's how everyone's getting their standard in nowadays. Anyway, I just thought you might like to know that sort of my reasoning for how I came to some of my conclusions in this video. Again, don't worry. There's going to be plenty of numbers later on. I know how you like the numbers. But anyway, I'm going to grab my notebook. It's the notebook from earlier. Foreshadowing is a storytelling device. Well, let's go ahead and talk about the first thing we're going to talk about. <laughs> Can you tell I don't script these videos? Is it that obvious? But anyway, really all I was thinking in my head at that moment was anime flourish. Literally the two words in my head, anime flourish with the notebook. Hope I nailed that part at least. But anyway, let's talk first about the first thing. And that is the effect that the Brothers War had on Standard in the first place. I think a good way of measuring a set's impact on Standard is to see what impact it had on Standard. I'm just full of them today. That's a tautology, we call that in philosophy. Now, how we're going to do that is I'm going to spring a list on you. It'll be fun. We're going to do it. It's a list within a video. I know how much you, you like lists. You didn't even click for one, but I'm going to give you one anyway. So what we're going to do is talk about like all of the cards from this set that have impacted Standard in some way or another, tally them all up, see how much they've impacted Standard, and then we'll kind of go from there. So this is kind of a top 14 Brothers War cards for Standard now that we no, now that we've had a couple of months to judge that. So let's just kind of start with Teferi, who was in the format in the early days, but has so we don't see too much of him anymore. But he was there. I promise you he was there. There's also Portal to Phyrexia, pretty much the same with that card. You don't see those reanimator decks with Portal as much anymore, but they're still really fun to play. Third Path Iconoclast, kind of kind of a budgety card. He doesn't show up too much in actual deck lists on Etherhub or MTG Melee. So he's not doing a whole lot in like proper big man standard or anything, but he's still an important budget card. We'll talk about him more later. There's Lauren of the Third Path. A lot of these mono white cards kind of showed up. Lauren, Steel Seraph in the occasional mono white deck. Occasional. <laughs> the occasional mono white deck. Lay Down Arms, pretty good piece of new removal and stuff. You got Brotherhood's End, another good piece of new removal showing up. A lot of sideboards. There's Misery Shadow. A lot of mono black stuff too. Misery Shadow. Gix was in this set, but the best was probably Phyrexian Flesh Gorger. If you had to declare a winner there, it's, it's very likely that card. There's also Mechanized Warfare. I know it 
you don't think that card shows up, but it's actually a really important card in best of one standard, which is, again, I think that's how a lot of people are playing their standard nowadays. It's traditional standard still a thing, but a lot of people are playing best of one, and Mechanized Warfare is really good there, along with Monastery Swiss Spear, which is good in both best of one and best of three. It's a, it's a good card. We all knew that. But there's also Siege Veteran. We're getting alarmingly close to the end of this list. This Siege Veteran is technically number two, um, and it just goes with, like, soldier stuff, like recruitment officer and that kind of that kind of thing but siege veteran is just kind of the face of soldiers in the brothers war but if i was going to be a little stinker which i think i am i think the most impactful card from the brothers war is probably even go for the throat <laughs> again it shows up in mono black it shows up in grixis it's in a whole bunch of decks and it has further cemented mono black and grixis as some of the most important decks in the format so yeah Best card from the set. Two mana, instant speed removal, reprint. Overall, that is 14 cards from the Brothers. And there's been a couple that have like seen a little bit of play. I guess Union of the Third Path, when blue-white control was a thing for a couple of weeks, and then it stopped being a thing for a while. I guess mono-white just took over what blue-white control was doing. But even mono-white... It, it has not established too much of a foothold. We'll get to talking about the actual meta here in just a It's the next thing we'll talk about. But still, 14 cards from a set impacting standard in some small way or another is actually not as many as you would really want to see from a brand new set, especially in such a small standard. There's also the fact that like half the cards I just listed haven't really impacted standard that much. It's a fairy, portal, third path, Lauren, Steel Seraph, Lay Down Arms, Brotherhood's End, I guess, is a sideboard card. Misery Shadow doesn't have to be in your mono black deck. Gix isn't always in the mono black decks. Phyrexian Flesh Gorger doesn't always show up. Mechanized Warfare only matters in one deck. It's like a lot of these cards, except for maybe Siege Veteran and oddly enough, Go for the Throat, were impactful in standard. They showed up in lists and stuff, but like were they really that impactful? Were they that? Was it, would a, was it a big deal? It was. A, would Standard really be that different if we didn't have Steel Seraph? I mean, some of you in the comments are going to be, I love that card. I love that card too, but like, wh how much would it affect the format if that card just wasn't in the Brothers War? And I think you could say that about a lot of these cards. This kind of sucks. So like 14 cards that sort of kind of a little bit impact in Standard and like none of them are commons or uncommons, which is something I really think matters when you're doing this. So I got to give impact on the format a solid C. Do I want to go lower than that? What have I got written down? I've got a C written down. So I'm going to stick with that. But since I've graded that part, let's talk about the second thing that I want to talk about. That's the format of this video. But the second thing actually kind of dovetails from the first thing, and that is deck diversity in bro standard. So here's where I throw these numbers at you for the numbers people. But in case you're not a numbers person, don't worry. I'm going to boil it down pretty pretty easy for you because it turns out it's pretty easy to do that in this environment but basically in best of three grixis is currently 22 percent of the environment 22 percent for a single deck the next deck is uh soldiers some some version of soldiers or another whether it's azorius or mono white it's like seven percent of the format which is a massive drop off that's only one third the representation less than really one third the representation that grixis has which is Something. Both Mono Blue and Mono White have about 5.85% of the format at time of publishing this video. A little less than 6% of the format for a couple of decks is not good. I had to double check to make sure. Ultimately, five out of the top eight decks in this standard are just Shieldred piles, whether it's Grixis or Mono Black or Rakdos or Esper or something else. But that's pretty much it. It's like five, something like five out of the top eight decks in this environment right now are all basically shieldred piles and over 40 percent of the format overall even when you get out of the top eight decks and you look at the top 16 or 20 decks in this format that only get like 0.25 percent of the meta when you really get down into the, the bottom of things of the barrel there and you start scraping stuff um when you when you do that it turns out even then over 40 percent of the overall format like close to 60 decks all just shieldred Stuff it's just like for three color shieldred pile, mono color shieldred, two color shieldred, Orzov shieldred, Golgari shieldred, to point three percent of the format. It's not. It's just mostly shieldred decks. But I guess you've also got mono white and mono blue. The aggro deck is soldiers in best of three, but in best of one, it's oddly. I was going to say more diverse, but that's not true. It's really not. You, know, and you don't really have to worry as much about Shieldred Piles, but you do. In Best of One, both all three, really, Mono Red, Soldiers, 
and mono black all have about 15% meta share right now, and mono blue has about 4.5% of the meta. Etherhub claims that Selesny Enchantments has 6% of the meta right now. I literally never play against that deck. But I do play a lot of best of one, and boy do I play against mono red when I'm on the draw. <laughs> mono red on the play, like, a lot of games. Soldiers, yes, that checks out. And then mono black sure feels like more than 50% of the meta, but that's... You, you see it a lot, and you see the Rakdos and the Grixis, the Grixis piles. Turns out that when you uh, aggregate every deck in best of one standard, it comes out to very close to the same figures as best of three in terms of how many decks are just Shieldred decks. So in the end, there are really only three decks in standard, whether you're playing best of one or best of three, and that's uh, Shieldred decks. Uh, aggro decks, whether it's soldiers or if you're playing best of one, I guess there's also mono red, right? Um, and mono blue, which is kind of the, the third deck. I mean, there's also mono white. I guess if you are playing best of three, it, it's technically more versatile because mono white is also technically a real deck in that format. But even then, best of three has four decks. Best of one has four decks, if you count the fact that aggro and mono red are separate decks. So four deck, four decks. Four decks in standard. And uh, most of them are decks that already existed. <laughs> Grixis was already a deck. Mono Black was already a deck. Mono Red was already a deck, despite the fact that it got a couple of cool cards in the set, but it's already a deck, you know? Mono White was already a deck before this set came out. Like, Soldiers was really the only new deck, if you really want to get technical, from this whole set's release, which is super bad. That's, a, that's terrible, as a matter of fact. So I'm going to go ahead and give this one a D+. Plus. That's, a, that's a, about right. I think that deck diversity in a format where in best of one, you have three or four decks. Best of three, you have three or four decks. And the set didn't really even affect the environment and give it that many new decks. We got like one new deck out of the set. So yeah, I think D plus, we're, we're close to F here, but we'll give it, we'll go with D plus. All right, so let's talk about the third thing, which is budget. Now, I'm not going to spend too long on this because... You can't in almost any standard nowadays. It turns out that you can't. There's not really a whole lot of budget talk to talk about. But this format does have some budget options, whether you're playing in paper like a weirdo. I hope you're playing paper magic still. Standard, standard magic. The, there's two guys out there still playing. Who knows? But anyway, or you're playing on arena where you care about wild cards instead of actual money. And it turns out that the it's a little... Honestly, the economy is a little bit south. A lot of these budget decks you can buy for less in paper technically than you can on Arena. But still, they're, they're budget for Arena because they don't have a lot of wild cards in them. Stuff like Mono Blue. We've talked about it a lot already uh, in this video. And what kind of sucks is that if you want the best budget deck in Standard, you have to play Mono Blue. It's a fun deck. It's not It's not a, It's not not a not fun deck. But you're, everyone's going to hate you for playing it. And honestly, you might hate yourself a little bit too. Because even seasoned Control and Tempo Mages eventually might just be like... Yeah, I'll counter that. Yeah, I'll counter that. Yeah, I'll counter that. Okay, I win. That's the only play pattern in the deck. Mono Blue has the one game plan. The same is true for Mono Red, which is technically a budget deck right now. It doesn't have a whole lot of rares or mythics in it, but it's still, you know, Mono Red. I don't think it's anything special. I think this is my point with the Mono Red deck, is I really don't think it's anything special if your environment includes a budget Mono Red deck. Every single environment includes a budget mono red deck. So I guess it's a good thing that the mono red deck that's pretty budget right now can actually win you some games. But even then, probably only in best of one. Like if you tried to go to F&M with mono red, you might get your teeth kicked in. So there's that. But still, the other budget deck, that's right. There's only three I really want to talk about. The other budget deck is the third path iconoclast things. I guess you could still do stuff with Illuminator Virtuoso if you wanted to. And sometimes you'll see Jeskai decks that have both, but you're really screwing up the mana. And it's definitely no longer budget if you have to have all those rare lands. But that is one thing about Iconoclast is it forces two colors on you. So you have to play rare lands. You don't have to. But still, I feel like Third Path is a pretty good like budget option to have on the slate in Standard. And even though he hasn't really shown up too much in like tournament deck lists, especially since the first couple of weeks of the, stand, the season, he's still like a nicer, little reliable dude on MTG Arena. You play this along with Balmore and a bunch of spells, and you just have fun. You know, tempo out your opponent, whatever. But if you're going to tempo out your opponent, it's probably just better to play Mono Blue, honestly. But if you want to do that while having fun and the occasional mana problem, but still having more fun, probably slinging spells and doing cool stuff, I would say the third path Iconoclast Balmore route is probably better, and it's not going to cost you like really any more wild cards to do it. Still, there's three like viable budget decks that you can play in standard, and one of them is one of the best decks in standard. So I'm going to go ahead and give this one a C-, which is 
Still not a great score, but I'm gonna, maybe I'm just being too harsh. Let's give it a C plus, sure, budget C plus. And the final thing that I wanna look at is fun. Is it a fun format? It's pretty subjective, it turns out, whether a format is fun. I'm sure that there's a lot of people out there who are landing Shelly's on turn four and their opponent doesn't have no removal and they just laugh as their opponent loses life and can't do nothing about it. And you don't even have to attack with Shelly. And then like the next turn you play Invoke Despair and your opponent loses six, you draw three, and you're just having the time of your life. It's a great standard. But most people, I think, don't care for it. And it's just not even that these cards are oppressive. I don't think I don't think Shelly is like a ridiculous magic card. It's too powerful. I don't think that Invoke Despair is a, is a sorry is a ridiculous magic card or anything like that. I just think that there's not a whole lot of more powerful things you can be doing in standard right now, and it's just really the worst thing that a standard can be which is predictable. And sometimes I like predictability. I like reliability. I'm playing Pokemon Violet right now, and it's kind of the same game that I played when I was 12 years old. You know what I mean? It's like Pokemon hasn't changed much, and sometimes I'm all for I can sit down to Stardew Valley and know exactly the experience I'm going to get every single time. Sometimes predictability is a good thing, but not necessarily in Magic the Gathering, especially if I'm going to load up, you know, 25 games a day, two or three hours a day. I want things to be a little bit different from game to game. And when opponent starts on Swamp every game, I'm not really feeling that diversity. You see, when I was coming up, Magic had an advertisement that they ran in InQuest magazine for a long time that stuck with me for my whole life. And the very, very end of this advertisement that I'm going to try to find and put on screen here says... Never play the same game twice. Never play the same game twice. Now, I'm aware that this advertisement is well over 20 years old at this point, but I'm still holding Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro, now Hasbro, to this to this promise. I, never, I don't ever want to play the same game twice. When there's only like two or three really powerful, super ridiculously powerful, obviously on a different level than other cards in the format cards to build decks around, and you got this thing where there's only like three decks in the whole standard. So that's pretty much where we're at right now. So that's not good. Uh, if I had to give a final grade to Brothers War Standard, I'd have to say, and I just want to be clear here, I'm not grading the set as a whole because the set did impact Commander. Uh, I picked up some stuff from Cube. It's impacted Modern in a number of ways. I don't think the set is terrible. I don't think the set is terrible. But I will say that for Standard, this set was somewhere around a B plus for me. And again, it's not the worst set uh, overall in the world. There's some cool commander stuff I'm interested in doing. I've already ordered a bunch of stuff from the set for the cube, cheap stuff, whatever. But in terms of standard, which is the thing that I play the most of, I'm the standard guy. It's like my format. I, I love it. All that stuff. Um, in terms of standard, this is one of the worst standards I can remember playing in in a while. And not because it's horribly oppressive or anything. I want to really stress that. I don't even know if anything should be banned. I've jokingly said ban Shieldred. I guess if I woke up tomorrow and they banned Shelly, I'd be fine with it. But I'd, I don't full on like advocate for it. I don't think anything's oppressive enough to get banned right now. The problem is it's boring and predictable. And that has caused me to not really play as much standard over the last few weeks as I normally do. When a set comes out, you know, I've been focusing more on cube. I've been focusing more on like building a couple of commander things, getting more into that format I've been playing Pokemon Violet, you know, <laughs> doing all that stuff instead of playing standard. You can tell that a standard is bad, whatever your description in my, in my opinion, bad is boring and predictable, you know, but you can tell a standard is bad for me when I don't even play it. Usually I can drag my sorry butt out of bed to play some standard, even if I don't love the format because there's cool things you can do in it. No, nobody's tried this yet. And what about this? It's overturned some rocks. But in this case, I don't even really want to because I know that no matter what I'm doing, opponents playing Shelly on turn four uh, or they're on the play and they're playing mono red and I don't, I don't even get a turn four. In any case, it's, it, it, I hope <laughs> that you enjoyed this video. Uh, more than you enjoyed the standard, which shouldn't be too hard. Anyway, that's all we got to talk about. We got a big full schedule coming up this week, if you care. We're going to talk about them planeswalkers in the next video, which is tomorrow. The day after that, we're going to talk about how I spent $5 on Dominaria Remastered, everyone's favorite new video series. And then it's spoiler season after that. So make sure you sub to the channel because there is a ton of stuff coming up in the next couple of days. And then there's all be one standard. And hopefully, 
that's good. You want to watch that content? That'll be a good standard. I promise that'll be a good standard. Just let me know how you feel or felt really about Brothers War standard down there in the comment section. Let me know how you felt about these assessments and such. Do you feel the way I do or is this the best standard? It, Deb, this is the best standard I've ever played. Let me know down there in the comment section what your thoughts and, and moods are on things. How was your day? Let me know. But anyway, that's pretty much all I got for this one. So I will catch you cats later. I am Deb from The Place. Thanks for watching, wizards. Spread love and be kind. Yeah, I'm feeling rich and I'm suddenly about to cash out. Smothered and covered like I'm some hash browns Glass clown stash crowns till I pass out Bass trout lobster on my plate